And then you have somebody who's a DM, um, who's in charge of running the table and then telling the story. They're in charge of writing the story and all the different scenarios that can happen during a game of Dungeons and Dragons. So picture it almost like a tree where you kind of, you start off, you know, all of your characters have met, all of the players have met each other, and then they can literally go in any direction they want to. You can say to them, oh, you know, this person needs your help, can you go to them? Somebody on the table can say, nah, I want to go in that direction. <laughs> and everyone that agrees will just go in that direction. So the DM has to very quickly decide, okay, how is this going to work? And so they have to figure out all these different scenarios and situations that they have to deal with. And it, it puts you on the spot. And it's, I feel like it would be a really good exercise for a writer because, yeah. you know, you're, you're doing I was, it. I, well, I was sitting here as an actor thinking that's a really good exercise for an actor that, that mm. cause improvisation for acting is, is yeah. very important. Oh yeah. It's a huge To be able to think on your feet, to take mm. the next moment yeah. and, and roll with it. And yeah, go with absolutely. It. Mm. Yeah. No, I love D and D. I think it's brilliant. I feel like everyone should try it once. Um, well, try in my case, try it twice. Try it a few times, maybe. Uh, <laughs> I think I think my my thing is I should have I should have prepped. No. I should have gone in with a little bit of experience. I should have maybe done some gone and checked out some YouTube videos where no. someone gives some advice. Or well, you've got to start somewhere. You can mm. start you can start anywhere you want. It doesn't matter. Like just you've started by going in and having no idea how to play, it. Mm. and that's a very fair way of starting. Yeah. That, yeah, so that's um, so good? that's D and D. So that's D and D. That's D and D at the Geek Retreat. It's good. It's a good time. Um, I've painted a lot on the walls in there as well. Have you? Your art shall be found on the walls. My boss, shout yeah. out to Tom. You Hi, Tom. No, I'm joking. Uh, <laughs> basically, it's a it's a really nice big open space, um, and he knew that I've painted sets and I've painted big things before and so he kind of gave me, gave me free reign to paint on the walls however I wanted mm -hmm. which is really funny because I'll be halfway up a ladder painting some eldritch monster and a little kid will come in and be like wow I love it and it almost sends you sailing off the ladder because they've jump scared you um but it's 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 another thing like that like you see people come in and be like oh wow that looks really cool I love how that's been painted and I get the pleasure of saying I painted it myself um, and it kind of makes it feel like a little bit of me in there yes, yeah. there's a lot of projects that we want to do that involves painting all over the walls and and making the place feel really unique and really interesting um, and so I'm you know it's nice that I've put a little bit of my personality in that place and it felt nice to be um, trusted with that responsibility as well because it is a business I don't want to paint something on the wall that you know, this company is going to be like, why is that there? <laughs> I, I can hear this? you speak of this place with a lot of love. I love it. It's mm. comfy. It's a very, it's a really, it's like the nicest conventional job I've ever had. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's an amazing time. Everyone that walks in is friendly, alternative. It's a very LGBTQI plus friendly space. Um, we host pride events. We have art clubs. We have literature clubs we have board games nights where random people can Sounds come like a and... very unique cafe i love it i love yeah. it it's the best kind of cafe Sounds always. like you found your tribe there yes absolutely i've made so many friends through working there like i didn't even like the amount of people where i've met that i've become friends with that i was like i didn't realize all of you people were local to harlow and it's just hordes of it, like amazing nerds that mm -hmm. i love like-minded so people much. yeah like, they're great. I love all of them. Could I guess that you, you mentioned that, that you're feeling like this is one of the... the your life is feeling pretty mm. fulfilled at the moment. Yeah. Is having these people around you, these friends, would you say that's a big contribution to that? Oh, 1,000%. 1,000%. Mm. I went through a period of having to get rid of really negative stuff in my life because I, I struggled a lot with depression and my mental health. And I realised that it... A huge contributing factor of my depression was the people I was surrounding myself with. Um, COVID especially didn't help because you're trapped with people you don't like and trapped with people that are toxic and treat you poorly and that messes you up more than anything else mm. is being surrounded by negativity and toxicity and so I had to purge all of those 
people out of my life. Even the people that I thought that I loved were the people that were still holding me down. And since then, I have focused on surrounding myself with people who I know care. And I feel like that's so important. And I've preached that ever since, is if you don't feel like you're in a good space and you're not surrounded by the right people, you need to leave. Because those people are gonna suck the life out of you.